Hey friends, I'm Adam with Garage Gym Lab and this is the new Cleva Built Atlas Landmine and Cable Attachment. One of the most versatile and aesthetically pleasing attachments on the market with multiple grip widths, a very unique neural pattern, and a few other features that I'll detail. There's a lot to like about this compact and lightweight tool. So let's find out if this is the new gold standard for landmine attachments and who it may be right for. Now, if you've ever used a Cleva Built product before, then you're probably aware that they do things a little bit differently. Their products are uniquely designed, they're lightweight but durable, and there's a keen eye towards detail and aesthetic. As soon as I opened the Atlas, I was immediately reminded of this, and it's something that I really appreciate about the company. Think of some of your favorite brands. I'm an Apple user myself. Okay, don't at me, let's keep this civil. But it is an interesting comparison in my opinion because Apple has a clear identity from the unboxing to the design to the overall look and feel, it is uniquely Apple. And in my opinion, not that many fitness companies have that sort of identity. Cleva Built, however, is one of them. I've been owning and using their products since the early days. The Genesis Jack, the Genesis Jack Pro, the Adroit Landmine, and even this super top secret product that I think a lot of people are going to love, it's all uniquely Cleva built. The Atlas is the most recent release from Cleva. It's a multi-function attachment that can be used for landmine training as well as cable-based training. And there's a few other characteristics about this attachment that you won't find on others. The first thing that you'll notice about the Atlas is that it's extremely lightweight. Built almost entirely out of aluminum, it weighs less than eight pounds, making it roughly 50% lighter than some of the single landmine handles that a lot of us are familiar with. So not only is it easier to handle, but it's also easier to store and even potentially to travel with if we're moving between locations. Dimensionally, the Atlas measures 32 inches long by six and a half inches deep, and roughly nine and three quarter inches tall when you factor in the attachment point. Despite it being six and a half inches deep, however, it only takes up about four inches of space on your actual barbell sleeve, thanks to the tapered design, which to be fair, has been around for quite a while. This does save roughly two and a half inches of space on your sleeve. So depending on what type of plates you're using, you can actually load a 45 or more onto the bar. On the outside edges and on the internal diameter of these hole openings, you'll find acetyl coverings to protect your barbell sleeves and collars, while also ensuring your Atlas is gonna continue to look good over the long term. And if you wanna talk about consistency, just look at how precise this entire assembly is. Just very impressive craftsmanship. On the top of the assembly, you'll find a stainless steel attachment point, which you can use for lat pull downs, low rows, and some other cable based movements. It too is offset along with that taper, but one of the things to note is that it's not perfectly centered. As you'll notice in its natural hanging position, there's just a little bit of lean to it, but it's not something that I've been able to really feel when actually using the Atlas. More so on lat pull downs than low rows, but neither of which leave me thinking that this is an unbalanced tool by any means. That said, to remove all doubt, I think instead of this attachment point being sandwiched between the acetyl and the frame, it could just be moved to the inside. By shortening these three rods, moving the attachment point to the inside, and then bringing the acetyl to sit flush against the frame, not only are you adding an additional quarter inch of plate room, but you're also bringing that attachment point to virtually dead center, which is going to create a more balanced experience. All that said, one of the biggest selling features of the Atlas is its ability to perform cable movements. And on the whole, it does a really nice job. It's light enough so when you're changing the weight on lap pull downs, it doesn't outweigh the base plate of the machine, which can otherwise cause the cable to start dropping. On rows, it's light enough to where you don't have to do an effective front delt raise to maintain position. And the multiple grip options are a great feature for both of these movements, which brings us to the handles themselves. The Atlas offers three different grip widths, two which are stationary and one which is adjustable across three holes. The most narrow grips have an eight inch width, the outer grips have a 30 inch width and the middle grips can range from 16 inches to 22 inches in width. I tend to prefer the middle hole of this middle section, but you can play with it based on your preference. Clever provides an Allen key in the package to adjust these handles and they smartly included plastic washers to ensure the powder coated finish always looks nice. 
While I like these two stationary widths a lot, I'd love to see full adjustability across this entire frame so that we could all dial in our favorite widths and not just in the middle. The handles themselves are also made out of aluminum and they include one of the most unique knurling patterns that I've ever felt. Each point is noticeably wide, which creates a very different feeling than what you would find on a barbell, for instance. It provides a very grippy texture, but it's neither aggressive nor passive. I don't think that I would really care for it on a barbell application, but in my opinion and in my experience with this, it is a very satisfying knurl for an attachment. Each handle measures six inches long and has a diameter of 29 millimeters, which is something that I think is gonna be beneficial for a lot of people because it does have a consistent diameter with a lot of barbells out there, especially when you consider that a lot of other landmine attachments have thicker diameters of between 33 and 50 millimeters. If you do wanna train with a thick grip, however, you can easily add a fat grip or similar to achieve it. Given that these handles are easily removed with an Allen key though, I'd love to see Cleva offer an alternate thicker grip handle set. That way you can easily swap them out, get the benefits of thicker grip training while also still getting the unique feeling of this knurling. You'll also note that each handle option is on a different level, somewhat mimicking the tapered feel of a lap bar, for instance. I found this to be one of the best features of the Atlas. It's more comfortable, especially in the widest position, and it feels more effective as if I'm able to target those areas with a bit more intent. As far as my favorite way to use the Atlas, it's definitely as a landmine row. I genuinely love using this tool for rows and it's become my go-to landmine attachment. From training a specific grip width to supersetting all three, it's been a joy to use and switching from handle to handle is really easy. I've also really been enjoying these wide grip gorilla rows that my friend David from Sticks and Stone recommended. One common question that I've been receiving is, can you press with the Atlas? And the answer to that is yes, so long as you have high quality barbell collars. Unlike a Viking attachment that uses a set screw to lock the attachment into place, the Atlas cannot be locked down. As such, you'll have to prevent it from sliding with barbell collars on the plate side at a minimum, and you may even want to put it on the outside edge as well. When setting this up, depending on the press or even squat movement that you're performing, I'd also recommend anchoring the landmine towards the back of your rack and using a J-cup to rest the bar on. Otherwise, it's very difficult to bring this back to the floor since there aren't any neutral grips to effectively clean the bar down. Aesthetically, the Atlas comes in several different colors. Obviously, this is the white, also known as the snow, but they offer a few others based on your taste. I particularly like the sea and the moss outside of the white, which is my personal favorite. But regardless of which one you pick, they all include a beautiful matte finish that looks and feels very high end. And lastly, price. If you're catching this video early, then you're gonna be able to take advantage of Cleva's introductory pricing, which is $100 off, so you can get the Atlas for $199. Otherwise, and after the fact, it's gonna move up to its normal pricing of $299. There's no doubt that this is on the high end of the price spectrum when it comes to a landmine attachment and is therefore probably gonna price some folks out. I would say if you're a heavy landmine user and you like the idea of some of the additional versatility that this provides by way of this attachment point, then I would certainly recommend the Atlas. If buying USA made products and supporting small business is also important to you, then that may be something to consider as well. For my personal training, this is my new landmine attachment of choice. No question, it's fantastic. For cable movements, I like it more for low rows. And while it does do a good job of lap pulls as well, especially with this tapered frame, I just have some other attachments that I tend to favor over it, including the Prime 4-in-1, for example. As far as improvements go for the Atlas, I think moving this attachment point inward, adding adjustment holes along the entire frame, and adding a knurled thick grip handle set are all possibilities. That said, and as is, for an all-in-one attachment, the Atlas is superb for landmine training and really good overall for cable-based training. So what do you guys think of the Atlas? Is this something that you would want to add to your gym? Let me know in the comment section down below. As always, guys, thank you so much for tuning in. I really appreciate it. I look forward to seeing you on the next video. Until then, be well, and we'll chat soon.